So what will your role be inside of the WWE, outside of possibly an under... Now entering Nerdist.com. Wrestling buddies want to be your buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy. You got me mad now. Welcome, everybody, to another action-packed edition of the Wrestling Compadre Slamcast. Holy smokes, do we got a lot of goodness to cram into one little show for y'all today. NXT TakeOver 2 results, Night of Champions predictions, Raw, Impact, and not to mention two awesome interviews with Sting and Daniel Bryan. You might have heard of them. Yeah, it's going to be a good day to be a compadre. Speaking of compadre, segue alert. Uh, oh, we got some guests here in the studio. Uh, Johnny is out in Vegas trying to make that funny money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean male prostitution, Kathy. Calm down. I mean stand-up comedy. And Chuck is still in H-Town with his family. So, you know, I had to roll out my plan B. I, I'm not good at... Plan A? Towns. What are you talking about? I mean, well, you know. There's always a plan B. So, thank you, Triple H. Uh, <laughs> it is my pleasure to welcome back a regular here on the Compadre Slamcast and one of my favorite folks on the airwaves today. He's smart. He's funny. He knows how to rock a beard, and he's taller than anyone really should be. He's the host <laughs> of an always hilarious Curtain Jerks, and you can also find him at 16 Bits Podcast on iTunes and on Twitter at Curtain Jerks. He's Scott Narver. It's good to be here. It's Welcome good to back, be a buddy. plan B. Yeah, you know what? You can't all be plan A. That's all I got to say. <laughs> uh, I'm next making your second wrestling compadre's appearance. But to me, the first one doesn't even really count because I was in Hong Kong. So I know. Is that even? No, I don't think we can count that. So uh, you can find her in approximately 316. What? After Buzz TV shows. Is that an accurate count? How yeah, many that's you got? an accurate number. Something around there. Give or, or take 315. <laughs> no, you got a lot of good shows over there. Um, at, or you can find her cooking up some yummy cupcakes, Yum. which is why I love her. She is the loveliest, most talentedest hostess with the mostest. Find her at Catherine Kelly on Twitter. She is Kathy Kelly. Oh, I love that intro. Oh, yeah. My cheeks one. already hurt from smiling so hard. Uh oh. It's not my wisdom teeth. <laughs> Kathy, uh, Kathy had her wisdom teeth uh, taken out just recently. So it's weird. We had Carolyn was in here last week or two weeks ago. I know. Ago, I saw her we should, teeth were also just taken we out. We could have been wisdom teeth recovery buddies, <laughs> I know. and it, just, it didn't work out. At least we share drugs or something. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and for our final fatal four-way spot, we have a very funny stand-up comic who I've really grown to enjoy having around. He remembers basically everything that has ever happened in the world of wrestling, which may explain why he has a uh, he was virgin till he was twenty-five. <laughs> 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 Very accurate, actually. <laughs> Almost 26. <laughs> well, you're not a compadre virgin. Uh, you can find him at Nat Baymel because his name just happens to be Nat Baymel. Welcome back, Glenn. I'll be honest. Listen, you do their intros. I was really hyped about mine. I'm just like, ooh, he's saving something for me. <laughs> <laughs> you just throw me right under the bus. Yep. They can't all be winners. So now that you know all the players here, we're going to do a quick interview with Sting to start off the show. It was uh, from right when they announced 2K15. Scott, you were there with me. I think mm -hmm. uh, he did a little appearance on your show as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, you won him over big time because you said, let's sit. <laughs> <laughs> he was very excited about that. Well, he was like, no, 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 we're good. And then he realized, oh, this is going to be a long day. <laughs> and then he sat down on the couch and was happy. He was a happy clam at that point. It was probably the best interview anybody got out of him because he sat down. That's true, and uh, you'll hear Chuck on it. So if you're if you're being um, nostalgic for Chuck, here is our interview with Sting. All right, guys, we are here with a living legend. He is Sting. Sting, how are you, man? I am excelente, doing really, really good. So, Sting, so many people have been wondering and like clamoring for you to come to WWE, and you're finally here. What what is that feeling like? Well, you know, I keep saying the same thing. It's like. Um, Long overdue, you know. I uh, I knew it would happen in some capacity at some time. I did not imagine that it would be you know this this long. It was way way long overdue, uh, but it happened, and and I'm glad that it did. I'm glad to be here, 
and I'm really grateful for the reception from uh, WWE fans, the roster, some of the guys in the back. I mean, you know, this is this has been a great experience so far. Absolutely. Now, you just got done doing the roster reveal panel, and you're up there with someone that you've had many run-ins with, Hulk Hogan. What's it like to be back in the same company with him? Well, it's exciting. It's uh, it's always a good thing to be uh, hooked up with uh, Hulk again or attached to him in, in, in some way. And, and, and definitely, you know, there's a, a little bit of comfort, you know, even knowing that Hulk is there. And he was happens to be sitting right next to me at this particular panel. So he's always been a, a sting booster. And uh, so that's good. How influential was he in bringing you to WWE? Um... Yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know if he was, you know, at this point, he, he was influential enough because he, you know, every time I'd sit next to him on a plane or talk to him in a hotel room or whatever, he'd say, "Man, come on, you need to come on out." As a matter of fact, he called me earlier this year and said, "Hey, brother, what's going on? Let's let's talk." So he he did have some influence. I mean, um, so what will your role be inside of the WWE outside of? possibly an undertaker match as we heard but yeah. what uh do you have an ambassador role or what do you what are you here to do you know i'm i'm open to that i'm open to that for sure i mean i'm not uh i'm not i can't define anything at this point i just i just know what i'd like to do and and i'm uh excited to see what doors may or may not open and just kind of play it by ear as time goes on here everybody talks about your anticipation for potential opponents in the wwe uh, do you ever think about the potential excitement for all the guys in the back wanting that chance to wrestle you? That I'm sure back in the day you felt it coming up in the territories and r- wrestling the big names. That does that excitement transcend back to you with the younger guys? I, you know, I I hope so. <laughs> you know, the more I get to uh, get in the WWE doors here and and kind of mix with uh, some of the boys in the back and then find out what's going on. I, you know, I'd give you a clearer answer, but. At this point, you know, some of the younger guys have come up and, and shook my hand and said, man, you know, I grew up watching you, and you're one of the reasons why I got into wrestling. It's very humbling to hear, and and uh, I'd like to think that they they would all love to have at least been in the ring with me once, you know. Now, Sting, i got to ask you a little bit of a bittersweet question. Right before you came back to WWE, your old partner Warrior did, and, you know, since he's passed, maybe... Were you guys planning to link up and do some stuff here? And do you have maybe a favorite warrior memory you can share with us? Yeah, I, I was looking forward to uh, reconnecting with him uh, for sure. Um, uh, his new wife and his two daughters. Um, I'm just going to miss them by a few minutes here today. I got to go catch a plane, but I wanted to meet them. Wanted to reconnect with with Jim and uh, um, especially under the WWE banner, you know. And maybe possibly work with him in some capacity. I was looking forward to that. I, I really was. What well, was the second part of the question. Do you have a favorite memory of him? Oh, favorite memory. Yeah. Oh man. You know, I, I can remember. I can remember leaving California right after we finished wrestling camp, and we were driving in in my 1983 T-Bird. <laughs> and we were driving uh, east on Interstate 10. We got to New Mexico and hit a ice storm, snowstorm. And we were so stupid. We had no idea what we were doing. Truckers were pulled over on the side of the road. We'd look at the truckers and go, wonder why they're pulling over like that, you know? We ended up stopping to get gas and something to eat. He got, he got one of these um, honey bun, you know, pastry things. He couldn't <laughs> wait to do that. He was talking about Waffle House and scattered, covered, and smothered and all kinds of stuff like that. I didn't even know what he was talking about. I'm a California guy. The food of anyway, the road. We get, we get back on the freeway, and uh, we, we start heading out. We're, we're probably 60 miles an hour, and we hit some ice, and we did about three 360s oh and ended up pointing straight oh ahead God. and just kept on moving. So that, that's, there that's, you go. That's a good one. A little memory about Jim there. Well, thank you so much for your time, man. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so big show today, gang. Let's dive in. I think first up, we should talk about Takeover Two. Oh my gosh. I mean mm-hmm. that show. I mean, if they weren't, I guess they're not charging for pay per views technically anymore. Yeah. But this is something that I would pay like it's worth specific money to nine ninety nine. As much of a joke <laughs> as that is, it's worth that money for. 
take over just for, just, that. just for that for the entire month i mean i feel like nxt is my favorite product it's kind of like the you know the band that you knew before they got big yeah um, you're yeah. excited and i want everyone to see it it's just that good yeah we were talking last week how raw was such a smart move you know i have a lot of friends that will watch raw and that's kind of it and the pay-per-views you know mm -hmm. but when they had the nxt match a lot of them uh, that i talked to was like oh i I need to get to watching some NXT because these guys are, are crazy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they had them on there, if, if nothing else, just to get exposure for these guys. But yeah. what do you guys think of the, the, the pay-per-view? Or not pay-per-view, special event. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I liked about it. There's some of the stuff that, you know, it still feels like an indie show, but their ratio of hits are way better than their misses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I was watching it with my friend, and we hadn't watched any NXT together. We'd seen some of it separately. So we're sitting down going... Do you know who this guy is? <laughs> no. Do you know who this guy is? All right. And then that excitement of watching that person for the first time. It's th it's that show mm -hmm. has to make a first impression for a new fan. Yeah. And seeing that pressure and seeing if they hit it out of the park or seeing, you know, if they, you know, it's a it's a misfire or it's someone else just showed them up that night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's you're only going to walk away with so many names in your head of. This guy's amazing. I like this girl. And, uh -huh. and but they all they're have that all new... amazing. That's the <laughs> yeah. problem. I mean, from Sami Zayn to Adrian Neville, Tyler Breeze, and then I feel like every single girl on the NXT roster is ready to come up to the main roster. They're all incredible. Yeah. Well, let's start with the so 344 day tag reign. Mm -hmm. It's over. All done. Finally. Were y'all surprised by that, or kind of happy that it was it was done with? I was happy just because, I mean, when's the last time they faced a team of, like, much merit, you know? It was always like, and already in the ring, Steve and Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be the just ones to dethrone them. Annihilated <laughs> every single time. Yeah, I mean, the Ascension, they had their time when I felt like they were kind of the same note. Yeah. Um, and I was bored with them. And then recently they seemed like they figured something out where I believe that they were that dominating force. So I wasn't really sure which way it was going to go. So someone told them you might lose the belts in a couple months and then go up to the main roster. They're like, "Yes, we're fine. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Been, let's do this." They've been trying them out on the road a lot recently, right? Yeah, so, that's what I heard. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where, like, it's really sad because, like you were saying, we love NXT because it's its own little bubble, it's a self-contained universe. It's yeah. very specific. Bailey's gonna hug you, chance things that like <laughs> yeah. don't really get over that. anywhere Tyson else. In chicken, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But they wouldn't, for some reason, they lose a lot of that magic once they get brought up to the main roster because there's too much micromanaging and all that. Because, like, I mean, Emma was yeah. one of my favorite parts of NXT. I know, the Emma dance, the evolution. And I feel like one of the, the characters that hasn't completely gone over from NXT yet is Bo Dallas. Yeah. And yeah. His, when he left NXT a couple months ago, just his exit was one of the most epic things that I still... I talked to my friends about like I feel like that was so good giving them cookies and then like no you you leave I'm I'm calling Tampa security <laughs> okay I didn't call Tampa security but you should still go <laughs> so great and I I don't know it hasn't completely translated yet I'm hoping that it will eventually on the main roster but I don't know how. I think a big problem is just a lack of patience because what mm -hmm. happens is in NXT, I mean, it's a development territory. They're yeah. given time to grow. It's like they come in very – some of them are very green. Some of them are guys who've been wrestling for years, but they're good at, like, taking their weaknesses and just having them develop. You know, some guys are amazing in the rain, but they don't have much of a personality or the other way around. And they'll just, like, let it grow. And then you have these characters that, like, grow over time, and we know them. There's nuances. There's levels. There's layers. And then when they brought up to the main roster, like – I don't know like the ins and outs of it, but what I understand is Vince doesn't keep too close an eye on NXT, so they have to pitch these guys to Vince, and they I just mean, take the very like one note is aspect of them, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's an inspirational speaker. Mm -hmm. That's his thing. But Triple H said that NXT is his baby, and he's yeah. like been really, I don't know, trying to develop all the the talent down there. Just invest a lot into it. Yeah. I think I think to your point, too, they benefit a lot from not touring. So all those yeah. fans that are there, yeah. they've probably been there multiple times. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you noticed at TakeOver, somebody started a CM Punk chant, and then the <laughs> yes. crowd was like, boo! <laughs> like, don't start that crap here. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It is, it is a really hard situation. I, there haven't really been... People who were big at NXT that have transitioned well overall. Uh, Even at the Wyatt family, the yeah. Shield, hello? Seth Rollins. <laughs> but yeah. they, they repackage all those guys mainly. I mean, I guess 
the Wyatts were, mm-hmm. were pretty. But this, yeah. in this the era The Shield of wasn't seeing... the Shield down at NXT. Exactly, yeah. Xavier Woods, I mean, a little bit. Adam Rose we saw from NXT. I feel like there is that opportunity. It just hasn't... You haven't had that time to develop a superstar. They've all they've gotten to the main roster, or you know, like the guys in the Shield and the guys of you know the Wyatt family. They are doing main event matches, yeah. but they aren't the top dog yet. Right, their time will come. And Xavier Woods, and I mean, the most interesting they had him doing, they they had him drop it immediately, but it was a repackage as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I just don't know if if people who keep the gimmick yeah. if it works. Like Emma was another one that just didn't really. Go yeah, because I mean, she was a heel for a <laughs> lot of her run, and that. Uh, like dance was originally supposed to be like a, you're laughing at her, but then eventually it endears to you. But then like she just debuts as a girl who does this like wacky dance, and no one knows what this is or yeah. why she's doing it. And it's and then they put it with Santino. Yeah, another yeah. thing, just a joke overall, you know. Yeah. Which I I honestly I, I I have a feeling Kathy you might disagree with this, but Bailey to me, even though she delivered a good match, I like her in ring work. Her baby doll look. Or whatever is going on there with the side ponytail, it drives me freaking bananas. It's, I mean, it's not sexy like we're used to, but I think that she's just she's such a good wrestler, yeah. Um, and she's so committed to that Bailey character that it works. Like, I mean, you have to realize that a lot of WWE is um, geared towards kids, and yeah. I feel like she is that. You know, she is uh, sort of mentor, not mentor, but. Um, She's Punky she, Brewster. She's, I, I mean, kids are, little girls are going to relate to her. Like yes, they're going I get to that. say, "Oh, well, I was bullied by these girls at school, but yeah. there's a really cool girl named Bailey who I look up to, right. and that's what that. she's there for." She's a great role model because she doesn't look role like model. any of the other divas. <laughs> yeah, I was just holding that in. <laughs> that was the word. <laughs> and she is very different from the other ones. I just, I just have such a hard time taking her seriously. I don't know. Which is, like, I mean, the point of her character. Mm Because, I mean, for the whole time, I mean, you know, she's going to hug you. She's just, like, she's the wacky flail and inflatable arm people. I mean, she gets announced as It's Bailey. Yeah. Right. Every part about her is, like, and this entire storyline leading up to this show was, okay, look, she can actually go. It's like, we never took her seriously. We loved her, but we don't take her seriously. And now, and I don't know if necessarily she would have to change now that we're supposed to take her seriously. Or if it's a, like, you know, looks can be deceiving sort of affair. It's funny, though, because... The past couple of weeks, we've been saying that we've been seeing a more aggressive Bailey now that she's had this thing against Charlotte, and it's really just a normal wrestler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I, I'm, I'm very curious. I, I love what she does in the ring, and uh, it's nice that she's like a fan girl. They definitely bill her as someone who grew up loving the business, which for divas is, mm-hmm. is pretty few and far between. Yeah, I'm, I'm still wondering with the aftermath of the the women's match, is Charlotte going to was that her changing to be a face or like what? Oh, what where she helped her at yeah. the end? Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot because I mean, I feel like it's a very slow burn. And eventually, mm-hmm. I mean, people are already kind of cheering her because she's very good. She's only been wrestling for like, what, a year or something? A year and a half, I think, is how long she's been down there. I mean, that, obviously, wow. genetics like, yeah. plays a part in that. She played but... volleyball. She's got those long legs. So Yeah, but as I remember, like, I mean, she was playing the character, you know, in the BFFs of just the bitchy, like, oh, we're better than everyone. <laughs> Can't sit with us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The other the other girls are all like, "I wish you died in the womb." <laughs> <laughs> but then, like when she won the title from Natty at the end of the tournament, I mean, everyone's like, "Wow, she can go." Yeah. That she, was you know, the best yes. match I think I've ever seen in my entire life. And like it was the thing of like, okay, we respect you, and then she sort of breaks away from the BFFs and sort of becomes her own character. And like she never really changed like what she did or who she is. But we respect her and we cheer her for it. And, I mean, eventually she earned, like, or Bailey earned her respect. And she didn't, like, overtly shake her hand or hug her or anything. But she was just like, yo, Sasha, no, not cool. You're Get out of here. Exactly. <laughs> I like it. Um, okay, so Baron Corbin, which mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure is a pirate somewhere. <laughs> <of that name. laughs> uh, he, I guess he just, he just left C.J. Parker in, uh, in a pile of dreadlocks. What, what do you guys think of a, a really strong beat down debut like that i mean we've seen him before if you're a fan of nxt i thought it was he had short hair before saying, didn't he yeah they, he looks a little bit different um but just saying that it was a re-debut was kind of weird or his i don't know yeah. but he he looked amazing he looked yeah. really good in the little he, that we saw him oddly reminded me a little bit of punk just in his vibe okay. i mean a, a bigger version, i didn't put that together but, but i could see that yeah a little bit a little bit oh well, he had weird colorful chest tattoos yeah and dyed dark hair 
Yeah, that too. <laughs> and there was a CM Punk chant at some point during the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what do you think, Scott? I, I thought it was all right. I, I was way more impressed by Kalisto. Like that guy. Oh, yeah. I, I looked at WWEshop.com. Mm-hmm. He is not for sale, and I want one. <laughs> <laughs> really, really He mad. could fit in your pocket, I'm pretty sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> that guy blew me away, because at first I went, oh, wait. Like, I didn't know if he was a dwarf. I didn't know, because uh-huh. he's right at an odd size, and I hadn't seen them together, and those guys blew me away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I thought Sin Cara mailed it in a little bit comparatively, but just because... That's right, they'll replace him. <laughs> just put some the fourth Sin Cara. <laughs> what if they just did Callisto to play Sin Cara when they bring him on up? <laughs> He's the new doink. Yeah. <laughs> They'll just put somebody else in there. I, I kind of felt like they, they may have picked this tag team, too, just to... I don't know. I mean, with, with ADR gone and, and um, Rey Mysterio sort of MIA, I don't really know what his status mm-hmm. is. I mean, I thought it was a good move on their part to to give the the titles to them, just to... I honestly don't think that they're going to have him long, though, because with that lack of having, you know, Luchas on the main roster, oh, you think um, they'll move they're going to move him up yep. and then potentially give the titles to the Vaude Villains, who they've been oh, building yeah. Yeah. a lot the last couple months. Yeah. Uh, or Bada Boom Reels guys in the room. Yeah, that too. Oh, I think that God. could work. The hair versus hair match was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing too with NXT is like we're just excited for everything going on with every mm-hmm. match. Yeah, and it's nice because it Raw is too dragged out. I think you would yeah. think with more time it would be like, and we have a million stories going on, but no, yeah. we have a few stories being told numerous, numerous, numerous times in that three hour period. I, I wish that they could shorten it or do more things like this where it's shorter and and you get I don't know you just get more bang for your buck, you get more segments. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know why every storyline seems way more developed. Um, it seems like more thought is put into it, and I don't know whether that's having like having to have it in such a short amount of time, uh-huh. or the fact that they tape multiple episodes in at a row one, in one sitting. So they have to know where they're going. Yeah, for they several plan episodes. it out longer. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and they don't have to ignore it for a bigger thing happening somewhere else. Like Raw, SmackDown, everything always has to focus back to Lesnar, Cena, or whatever else is happening. Mm-hmm. So. He's Slater coming out. Anybody else is like, well, yeah, forget this, but coming up soon mm-hmm. is this other thing. NXT is just focused on NXT. Yeah. Just the one show, the one brand. They've definitely made it the cool kids of like the independent circuit as well. It's like every fanboy's favorite guy is basically ending up in NXT at, at some point. I mean, especially with Kenta or... Kenta. <laughs> what, uh, oh, Video Atari? Hideo. Yeah, Video <laughs> Hideo Atari. Hideo Tommy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I was... I guess I should have expected a name change, but they kept talking about Kenta, and even when he came out, he's like, yeah, hey, Kenta. Kenta, and then it like evaporated away into his new name. <laughs> yeah, at least they acknowledged it. Mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, like, I was sad, and the fans, I think, were pretty sad. You had a couple of people clapping, like, I guess this is what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> but I mean, like, at least they acknowledged. It's like, look, you all know who I am. Mm-hmm. I'm going to change my name, and here's like a half-hearted reason why. If I get fired in a year and a half, I'll yeah. have my name again. But here's my name here. <laughs> here's my for now name. Mm-hmm. I, I thought mean, that the was... same thing happened with Sin Cara when he came in. Yeah. They, they had that press conference, and he, he changed his name. And he, t- he took the mask off. I'm trying to remember what his name was originally. Mystico. Mystico, yeah. But then they have people like Chris Hero, who you never really address it. And he's just Cassius Ono and yeah. goes back to being Chris Hero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess it depends on how big that star yeah. is. I, I mean, mean, they knew that they were going to get Kent a chance, so I think that that's why they did it. They wanted to establish on the show he is Kenta, but now he's Hideo Tommy. Mm-hmm. I almost wondered if they were going to do, you know, when the Ascension came out and basically kind of tried to interrupt what he was doing and, and he whooped up on him. I thought maybe, are they going to put Prince Devitt and Kenta together for a minute? or But then he, they didn't really touch anything there on that. There are a couple so. people that they... We know that they signed, but we haven't seen on TV Steen. yet. Like, Steen, yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like Solomon that's, Crow. The, the yeah, him especially. Selling shows for it. Like, if there's the next show, it's the debut of this person. The next one, it's the debut of this one. So, But they Kenta can keep... was so recent. I don't understand why these people are, you They're know, months ago now. that they were signed. Yeah, it's a lot to do with they want that Japanese market. And, I mean, you know, Yoshitasu got fired months ago. Yeah. So Yeah, and they now they're worldwide, yeah. almost, with the, the network. So maybe they're trying to bump that up, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Who else did we have? We had uh, the one match I wasn't really excited for, and it didn't last very long anyways, was Bull Dempsey versus uh, Mojo, Mojo Rawley. I just think he's impressive, though. I mean, Mojo or Bull Dempsey? Bull Dempsey getting on the top <laughs> rope being that size. Yeah. 
doing dives. Like, that's nuts. He, I don't know why. I mean, I think I need more time with him. Yeah. He, he reminds me of, like, a poor man's rhino. For, for and Taz, reason. yeah. And, and Taz, yeah, I could see that. But I just, uh, this match was quick, so I didn't have to get into it, I suppose. And Mojo left pretty bloody. I mean, both of those guys were guys that they're, I'm excited about originally, but it feels like NXT or WWE is trying to force them down our throats. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping that with Mojo, he'll figure something else out to do just because it has been one note. I think yeah. that he has a lot of potential. And then Bull Dempsey, I think that they're trying to make it a more natural, like, easing us into it as yeah. opposed to Mojo, who is, like, you know, doing such high-profile matches on NXT every week right after he debuted. I, I thought Mojo was my top pick for when I thought they were going to replace the Real Americans with a new tag team member. Oh, I thought he would have been, been good. Fast. Yeah. Well, wow. But, you know, whatever. I feel bad for Mojo. It seems like he's been given something. That, it's like the ringmaster thing with Stone Cold that it's not him. Like this whole Mojo thing. It's like, it doesn't fit really? you. It doesn't, As like, a football it doesn't, player, it makes sense. It uh, just, it, to me, it doesn't connect to something that he taps into. To me, it almost feels like that's a character he came up with and he's trying to play, but that's just not who he is. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe he doesn't know who he is. This is me getting very therapeutic here. <laughs> it's like, who hurt you, Mojo? <laughs> Emotionally. Let's well, talk about that. Bull, that bull guy did. <laughs> I'm in a bloody heap. Yeah, but what did you do that brought that on, though? <laughs> Stop projecting outwards and look in. Um, you don't cry. You stay crying. <laughs> Aw, poor Mojo. <laughs> um, Sami Zayn. Man, oh man. Incredible. I don't know. I think he's my like wrestling man crush right now. I, I just <laughs> love everything about him. He dances, seems super friendly. He's he awesome in the ring. He with his ginger beard. He, yeah. wear, he was wearing an Operation Ivy t-shirt uh, backstage. He's just I mean, so cool. <laughs> this is a cool dude. I want to be his friend so bad. <laughs> he, like, when he was still on the indie circuit, uh, he was the one guy I'd always be like really nervous around because I was such a huge fan of his. I would just sort of like be like, I just want to shake your hand. I really love and, you. Bye. And you have similarly colored beards. A little bit. <laughs> a little gingery. I get nervous in every match that he's going to break something because I feel like he puts his body on the line every single time. Like he just either he sells it really well or he looks like he's that close he's really, to doing something yeah, really bad. on the edge of danger. Yeah. And you just want him to succeed so bad. I know. That's always been his biggest strength is like he's just so empathetic. You just see him and you just feel his pain. You just feel his triumphs. He's a forever underdog though. I, I yeah. almost feel like they're not going to give it to him because of that. I don't know. And honestly, just I mean, I went into this like event. I was excited for it, but I wasn't as excited for previous ones because like I felt like I knew where everything was going. You know, uh, uh. like it's like all right, Bailey's done a win, Sami Zayn's done a win. It'll be great, but eh. and then when both of them didn't, I was just like, I'm okay with this because <laughs> the story will continue and it's taken twists and turns now, and it's it's logical storytelling. It's it's like storytelling 101. It's like you have your character, they have failures, but they overcome and they succeed. Mm -hmm. And that's the same as Zayn and Bailey's story. They're the nicest people in the world. You want good for them. and They finish last. Exactly. But they <laughs> finished, and that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, these four guys for the main event, I think this is a great place for Tyson Kidd to end up. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was He's just... got a really cool character now. I yeah. really dig what he's doing on there. I, I wonder if he's getting paid by Beats to come out with those headphones. <laughs> he should, if not. His promo two weeks ago was just incredible when he put everyone <laughs> over. Yeah. And then they replayed a little bit of it at TakeOver, but it was just, it was awesome. And, and uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. What do you think? So Neville's still undefeated in, in all of this year, 2014. No, he's a yeah. no losses. What do y'all think? Oh, people cheer for that, but they hate on Cena, huh? Hmm, interesting. Mm. You know, actually, I, I rewatched the ending of, of uh, TakeOver 2, and there are like there's like a chunk of dudes in the first few rows that are just like, one, two, three, and they're all just like instantly exasperated. They're like, oh, God, <laughs> why not Sammy, was what I pictured them. Mm -hmm. I mean, to Adrian Neville's credit, every single time you see the red arrow, it's still amazing. just as cool as the yeah. first time you saw it. <laughs> and that was the most amazing thing I thought about. Like, that was a great match top to bottom. I think the most amazing thing was, I feel like almost like one of the agents like gave them a challenge that's to say, all right, Adrian, I want you to do a red arrow and have everyone not be excited for it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I literally didn't want to see a red arrow at the end of that match. I was like, no, don't you do it. Oh, it's still pretty, but it hurts now. <laughs> So who would you guys call up if they if they said, okay, we need a couple of dudes, we got some holes in the roster? Sami Zayn. 
Sammy Zayn's your, your number one? Yeah. Especially now that Daniel Bryan is still on the shelf. Yeah. We don't have have we heard a date on that? Nothing, right? Mm-mm. They're hoping for a Royal Rumble last I heard. Ew, that's a long time. I hope he comes out in a Rey Mysterio mask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor At number Ray. thirty, gets in the ring, people are booing and then No, oh, it's me. I gotcha. <laughs> I just, I mean, Sammy is one of those people where I feel like he can work with anyone and his transition to the main roster would be seamless. Um, I think that from Raw a couple weeks ago, people were definitely intrigued by Adrian Neville. So I think that that would, you know. Yeah, that's all. Anyone who didn't watch NXT, they were talking about yeah, him. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They even said it was like trending worldwide. His name or, or maybe the move. I forget which one was. Everything's Red trending. Was trending. Yeah, I mean, what does it take a thousand people to tweet it to trend? I, I think well, so, worldwide yeah. is a different fact. Okay, so trending is like a hiccup. It's and a big worldwide deal. is like a big belch. <laughs> so, <laughs> and number one is like just a straight up chuck. Uh, yep, you're getting somebody's gonna puke. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like Sami Zayn. I would like to see. He's someone though that is so great in NXT. I would worry about what his character would be. I, I don't. I mean, he's just such a good wrestler that I think. But they have so many people that are such good wrestlers, and without Cesaro, a strong, like who's in that murky spot? Yeah, of yeah. They've, he's had so much, and then they take it away, mm-hmm. and it's like he's excellent, but the common fan doesn't have something to latch onto besides that. Yeah, like that bigger than life character that everybody loves and latches onto. So Cesaro mm-hmm. keeps getting in these weird spots when he's amazing, and then he's having these amazing matches with Sami Zayn on NXT. It's and- sad, because Cesaro, even like this past week on Raw, when he was in that tag match, it's forgettable. Like, yeah. that's sad. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that you're basically describing Kofi's entire career mm-hmm. as well. Like, I mean, oh. I, I love Kofi Kingston, great in the ring, besides that little hiccup with Randy Orton and the, the race car, that whole yeah, situation. Yeah, he hates race cars. He hates <laughs> race cars. Hates That's the last time he's getting near a stock car, for sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, besides that, they didn't. They haven't really given him anything, but he's so good. Mm-hmm. I mean, they give him that Royal Rumble moment. That's now become his, yeah. his legacy, I suppose, yeah. but... Yeah, it takes two tries to eliminate Kofi Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, but, everyone. But you will eliminate him. Mm-hmm. That's the lesson yeah, we learned. it's learn. doable. Just <laughs> get friends to help you out. Got to be adamant. Uh, yeah, so I, I agree with Sami Zayn, just as long as they, they package him with something. But I, I don't know. I think, honestly, he would probably stand the best chance just because... He doesn't have that bigger than life personality, but he has that likability, which is like He's you, very... you can't package that. And yeah. That's just mm-hmm. perfect. Tyler Breeze, I would worry about because they would bring him up with that like one note and then it would like get played Fon out. Bongo. Exactly. Or Dolph Ziggler. Or Adam mm-hmm. Rose or anything mm-hmm. else. It's just that one note that like the fans will sort of get the idea. Like, and... yeah, as hilarious as he is. On NXT, because like mm-hmm. on Raw, I feel like it would just like just drive it into the dirt in the first month. Yeah. It's like we've been saying about Bray Wyatt. I, as much as I love Bray Wyatt's character and he cannot get any better at what he's doing now we're a year and a half ish of him being on raw and I, I feel like it's like okay we need to evolve this a little bit like like ms dow i feel like this is something that if they progress it just a little bit every week or every month even we could have a great bray wyatt in, in no time flat again because mm-hmm. every every single piece is there but Without a little evolution to it, we just need a refresh button. Yeah. So they never go back to the compound. They went to oh, the compound yeah. in the beginning, and oh, it was yeah. weird and creepy, uh-huh. and the cameraman was freaked out. We've never gone back since. All those problems in the beginning, where they were there and he was preaching in the woods, yep. that's never done again. And and I don't know why they were that's in so Lafayette, cool. Louisiana this week. They had ample opportunity to go film some B-roll yeah. somewhere. Yeah, go <laughs> back. Even though that. that's all green screen, but go, still, go back to the roots <laughs> of what it was. I completely. That was like what got him over in the first place. Mm-hmm. It was just like this looks like a mashup between House of a Thousand Corpses and True Detective. Yeah, but it's wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say go back to that. Do the do a bit of the featured player stuff with him and like Lesnar that you see him every so often, but you're seeing these vignettes again with a master plan or going after somebody for some reason, and, as opposed to just like you're clearly in a closet talking to no one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the updated boiler room. It's <laughs> yeah. just easier to do. Yeah, I'm sure they can do them on the fly, and you don't have to right. be. You need one light for that situation. Yeah. What if it was something like a Blair Witch esque, like the opponent or whoever is like trapped somewhere? Ooh. Oh, go take Kofi. And then all you need is a GoPro. Yes, that's true. A it. POV match or a <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> uh-huh. 
All right, enough NXT. <laughs> that was great. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Never enough. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that that did make me so happy, and I wish they would do them more than once a quarter, but maybe it keeps it exciting. I was a little surprised with the placement of it to be last week and then an actual pay-per-view be this week. Mm. It, it seemed like maybe they could have spaced it out. We had a six-week period between pay-per-views. Yeah. I was They were so short. Oh, I did want to mention um, from NXT, Marcus Louis, who got his eyebrows and everything yeah. else removed um there's an amazing promo i don't know if you've ever seen it but it's from his promo presentation skills <laughs> yes. classes and it's back from god what was it like september yeah. and he's just he's this obviously himself french guy who's trying to say everything in english and it just comes out all wrong <laughs> the basic gist of it it like the punchline was what brought it all together don't he's like <laughs> don't spoil it yeah i won't spoil it but basically like it's him doing innuendos and not realizing he's doing innuendos. Like, I will get a golden shower. Of I will win the championships. It will be a golden shower and of I titles raining down the upon men me. On the way to the top. Good <laughs> lord! Hilarious. But the, like I said, the punchline. I looked it up. Like the punchline is what sells the entire thing. If nice. you've never seen it, Google it. No, I haven't seen that. So good. Yeah, it like, shows he's hilarious. Yeah, like back in September, they had like the entire NXT roster do like presentation skills, uh-huh. and so you know, had Enzo Amore and Cass. Like, and it's weird because it's like them like sitting in front of, like sort of like a blank screen and it's you can in tell the performance center yeah, yeah, it's just yeah supposed to be for class and then they got leaked by yeah you should hear like everyone else like clapping at the end of them and again why well, i love Sami Zayn. everyone's like doing this big over the top character of just like oh, i'm covered to get you or i'm gonna do this or like real Sami Zayn literally just goes i've been wrestling a very long time my mother's never seen me wrestle because i figure uh, i don't want her to see me until i really made it and who would have thunk it the first time she ever sees me is at a WWE live event in my hometown of Montreal. And then afterwards, as I'm coming back from the match, she's crying, and I hug her. I'm all sweaty, and I figure, that's a heck of a debut. Huh. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be his friend even more now. I know. Uh, okay, just let's go over Raw kind of quick, I guess. Um, <laughs> if we have to. We've got a half time to get to. <laughs> Uh, uh, it, it was definitely remixed due to football, which mm-hmm. I did not put together until we were talking about it last night. Um, I, I put it together. I don't watch football, <laughs> so you could have told me anything. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was an interesting technique to have Brock and Cena be at the top of the second hour. Um, did you? Th- and ending with Mark Henry was super weird. I didn't realize that. I watched the Hulu version this morning. Oh, and- is it different? Oh, yeah, oh, I guess they would. cut it down to 90 minutes. Right, 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 right. And uh, so I always get to miss, like, the weird, funny stuff that, you know, like, you do remember forever because it's like, yeah. why did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I watch Seth and Roman, their match, and I go, oh, that was it. And my brain just shut off and I went to sleep, not realizing Mark Henry and Rusev were the end of the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I read that uh, a little bit later on today. I go, that was the end of Raw? Yep. It just felt out of order. But by far, funniest segments of the night were Heyman and Kali. Oh, man. Kali finally found something good to do with himself. <laughs> yeah. And Cena with him, Guarded too. Like, that Guarded was fun. Like, that, that, the crossings of the universe where yeah. everybody's backstage. Do something with him. Like, hey, Kali, come here. Yeah. Well, other guy who he's talking to, like, runs off camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, like, do something fun with them. Utilize all these guys that you have working there. And I always love it when guys who clearly aren't wrestling are just in their gear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case. You never know. Mm-hmm. I do wonder how that works if a lot of times the AR just like, okay, you got five minutes. We just added you to the card or something. Mm-hmm. You know, I bet that happens more often than, than we realize. I mean, you're traveling every single week just in case you have that opportunity. Yeah. So it makes sense. Might as well put your pants on. And the thing I was thinking <laughs> during that was... <laughs> I was saying, like, well, I mean, Kali's very slow, so Heyman could outrun him. What? But could he outrun him? Then I thought... Because, I mean, Heyman's, like, a very out of shape, Heyman, middle-aged man. Yeah, he's not joining the track team. But Kali can barely move. <laughs> Just an arm So reach. if Heyman, like, ran for it, who would win that race? <laughs> and then by the time, like, I was done, like, running this through my head, it was like, oh, the, we're on, like, three segments. <laughs> <laughs> well, you thought about that a lot. I, I was really thinking about it. Just <laughs> like mind graphs and charts all over your wall in your room. Yeah, just like Kali's injuries and the toll taken on his body versus Heyman's age. If and Heyman his can run at two point eight miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, what what did you guys think about Roman and and Seth getting a clean I... match right before a pay per view? I I honestly can't even think of the last time. 
that they did that right before a paper. Not just that, but to also have what, like twelve minutes of match time? Yeah. That was a long it was match a long when you're match. gonna have that. Presumably yeah, another Sunday. long match. Because I mean I, like it was one of those things where I'm just conditioned to see that it's like Roman doesn't want to wait till Sunday. I mean I've been watching for, you know, like two decades plus. Yeah. And so I'm just like, okay, that means they're going to come out, and then the authorities are going to come out, and it's going to be a big schmoz, and it'll make us want to see them wrestle even more. No, they had a full-length pay-per-view match, and one guy won clean. Oh, that, okay. <laughs> um, do, do you want to see this exact thing again? Yeah. Like it was $10. Doesn't it kind of hurt the, 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 the heat going into it? Yeah. He, it, what's the point now? Is that, like... Like, uh, Seth lost. He lost to Roman. Not to say that he could never win again, but he right. didn't take revenge. There's nothing at stake. Like, unless what's they, the point of the match now on Sunday? Yeah, unless they had a stipulation. To me... They will, probably. They will. I feel like they have to. Mm-hmm. I mean, they may even... We're not... We're doing, recording this while main event is happening, so they could even be saying it right now. But I I feel like it's it's a way to put Ambrose in the situation again or something. There's got to be something else at play that they're like, ah, oh, this will be cool. So let's go ahead and get rid of this match and then we'll redo it this way. Kane comes out and then Ambrose comes out. I don't know. Something's got to happen. You know what Raw felt like this week? It felt like the pay-per-view should have been Sunday and they just accidentally had an extra week of stuff and they had to like <laughs> fill it. Yeah. Because like nothing, I feel like no stories really progressed while there were some good matches. It didn't <laughs> move anything forward yeah i felt like i was being punished watching that show because for years all i've ever wanted in bed for is like i just want more wrestling on my wrestling program please Mm -hmm. and so it was nothing but just boring wrestling matches that accomplished nothing and i was like all right i guess storylines it's a sort of purpose when you you have 52 weeks a year of content and however many hours of programming that they do it's i it's so gotta okay to have be. a week off, but like I, I it didn't did it. feel like a go home raw. Mm-mm. It it, it With felt the like exception I'm... of Cena and Lesnar, I'd say. Yeah. yeah, that felt that got me hyped up yeah. because now they gave Cena credibility of what he's been saying is I want to fight him, I want to beat him up, and he did that. Mm-hmm. So that gave credence to that, and that got me hyped up for that. True. I, I think he could have left, put that title on his shoulder and walked out and that could have been perfect right there but mm-hmm. then uh, just to get a little taste of of them fighting was great yeah and this and lesnar looked like he actually hurt his nose and cena was <laughs> being held by like 16 dudes they you said know? on yeah. commentary that lesnar broke his nose but how can you really tell yeah. i was like for Are sure you a his nose is broken no blood his nose is broken <laughs> <laughs> it was one stiff boogie <laughs> our bad yeah i i don't know it it was it was Perfect, and I was worried about it, especially when he actually hopped up onto the apron. I was like, I and I everything just leading save up, it. <laughs> yeah, and everything leading up to it too, because I remember like I really wasn't into it when the show started with the whole like it's like be a star, so, you know what are you doing here? Right. It's like I'm gonna beat you up because like this guy that would kill me isn't here, so I'm gonna beat up his <laughs> friend to teach him a lesson for beating me clean. Because what a dick thing to do. He did shove him too. I was surprised that he actually even did anything. I mean, he talked about his mama. That was so, a hell of a shove. He it was shoved him right out of the ring. Yeah. He, yeah. he was suddenly at the announce table doing commentary. Like, what? Oh, hello, everyone. Yeah, so he's, he's prepped like, all right, I know he's going to shove, you know. <laughs> Which I like it when, uh, like, a wrestler does something to a non-wrestler, and they sell it as if, like, no, these are super athletes, and this is how I would react. Like, if he were to shove Lesnar, you know, he'd fall back a little bit, maybe. I don't think he had a Straight choice. out of the ring. I don't think that was a choice by him, and I think he shoved him that hard. Yeah. yeah he went. Sometimes the momentum, you can see when they're like, oops, I was supposed to go out on the ring on this one, so I'm going to roll. But this <laughs> deal, it looked like it was like he may not have stopped had not yeah. been the floor there. Um, yeah, otherwise, I mean, I thought it was, I agree with you guys. I, I always love seeing Stardust, but, you know, we're going to see him at the pay-per-view. So. <laughs> uh, and the match also, like, like every sits man that WWE ever does is good. Like, it can't not be. Yeah. But it did seem like they were literally just like, all right, guys, you just go out there and you do your thing until we tell you to take it home because we're watching the, the NFL on monitors backstage and it's almost halftime. That's, that's a really good call. I bet that is very similar to what was happening in the rest yeah. of the So, like, a lot of it was just kind of really drawn out. And then the ending all of a sudden got amazing. Yeah, it was on fire. Yeah. yeah, just like last, like, two minutes all of a sudden, just like, everyone hit your finishers now. All right, false finish. Kick out. Get in there. <laughs> Top rope splash. All right. And uh, halftime, go. Yeah. The last minute was incredible, yeah. I will say. I mentioned this to you, that I wasn't really sure. The past couple of weeks, it seemed like they were um, trying to make it so that both Usos had 
knee injuries. And then they said last night on commentary that both of them were 100% and will be, you know, able to fight in their, you know, tag team match at Night of Champions. They are Wolverine-like in their healing. I just thought that it was... That was the opportune time to, if they are going to change the titles over, to not make them look bad. Yeah. I, I, my only thinking was is if they actually feel like they, they have some really high spots that they want to hit on Sunday, they uh. can't be injured mm-hmm. anymore or something. I don't, I don't know if they, they like finally yeah. planned out the match and they're like, oh. No, you're you're fine. Yeah. Right? We can do this. Yeah, and they never like said it's like, oh, he broke his like knee tap or anything like yeah. that. It was like he hurt his knee. They mentioned it he plenty was, of times. He was selling it so. for for. And a couple I mean, weeks. there are those guys that like even walking down to the ring. I think it was Jimmy who was like, you know, selling his knee injury a week later. Yeah, like when they're doing their entrance, and I don't think that every wrestler does that. No. It's- so hopefully it is leading to some really good spots on mm-hmm. Sunday. Um, this only may sound hypocritical coming from a guy with this beard on his face, but <laughs> Seamus looked like he was on hard times. <laughs> <laughs> that beard was scraggly. Yes, because it was kind of it had like handlebars or something. I don't know mm-hmm. what was going on. I saw it was it was yeah that like Ra's al Ghul from Batman Begins thing <laughs> going. Yeah. Which it looks cool, especially if he was to be like a heel or something. It, it looks scary. Yeah. But as, as he is now, I didn't really. I was like, so what's scary? going on? I thought he might be brown bagging it, you know. And then... <laughs> Hobo Seamus. That's Ir- the new gimmick. Irish stereotypes. <laughs> Aww. Uh, so, yeah, the only other things that I was surprised by on Raw was that we, we weren't saving Bo Swagger for the pay per view. I felt like they've been building that up, and then mm-hmm. we got a, a very clean one of. Uh, what a handful, maybe three losses that Bo has had, and he didn't throw a tantrum. I mean, I know he had to sell the ankle lock, but the fun part about Bo is him throwing those tantrum tantrums. Um, <laughs> we had on AfterBuzz one of our co-hosts, Evan Wexel, came up with this brilliant idea that Bo needs to have um, a submission move finisher. But while he's like got the person in the lock, the person like he's telling them like right as they're about to tap out, like don't give up, don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so and awesome. Was brilliant. It would yeah. be so good if it was like a camel clutch, so he could do it like in their ear. <laughs> or even like grab their wrist to be like, no, Don't you can do I this. I believe in you. <laughs> make a joke. Stay awake. Stay yes. Awake. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that's pretty much all of raw. I mean, anything else y'all thought that was kind of my favorite moment was uh, the Miz didn't zigzag and then like out on the outside selling and then Damian Sandow <laughs> and also they... selling the yeah. same move he didn't take. <laughs> uh, oh, actually, Big Show. Bray Wyatt. So oh, the uh, rumor before this was that Big Show would be the next. Okay, for let's Lesner, just say yeah. that Lesnar wins. We don't know, uh, but if <laughs> <laughs> someone was yelling like at us last week, this, this is only for you. Um, but yeah, so if Lesnar wins, Big Show to me kind of made sense, except that they had a little bit of a program. When was that? Royal Rumble. Rumble? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, it would seem to be that that would not be the case if if this new thing with Bray is. And I like Bray and Big Show together. I think that's a good. We we were saying yesterday. It's cool to see Bray with a bigger guy. Yeah. So I I, I like that. So who's next? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like, or Lesnar? Yeah. Goldberg. <laughs> the rematch everyone's been waiting for. Yeah. Can you imagine? I, I think they're saving that for Ryback. I think there's some fun in having number one tournaments for yeah. that spot, having Lesnar show up every so often, maybe interrupting those and saying, yeah, there's nobody, and taking guys out and making it uh, either showing guys are scared to go up against Lesnar or really starting that fire in a character where they're saying, no, I can be the one. I can be the guy to take him out and building that up. And then if Lesnar beats that guy too, then it, that's the next guy and the next guy. Yeah. A potential interesting route also. I don't know if I would like want to beat him already, but if Mark Henry wins against Rusev on Sunday, and because uh, I remember at the beginning of the year, I mean, he'd have been destroyed by Lesnar left and right, yeah. but I don't think they actually had a match, so there's already that pre-made history. And, I don't like, think so. Didn't he just break just... his arm or something? It was when he was yeah, yeah, yeah. in that breaking arm mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which I miss. We all go through that, you know. And the gopher screams. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I want paper or plastic? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I... I, I don't know. I they they're gonna have to build somebody up, and Reigns has been presumably the you know guy. But that's Hulk Hogan's s- around, and he's training. Oh huh? lord, uh, lord! I think they would do Cena Hulk though. I think if if they can squeeze another match what? out of Hulk Hogan, they will put him and Cena in a match. I just don't think they see said. that happening. 
there was this weird moment. So when we went to the uh, uh, the 2K15 panel mm-hmm. um, where they asked Hogan if he could, who would he face? And he said Cena. But they did this weird thing where they held a pose. Like Hulk was like holding his fist up and Cena was pointing at him or something. But they held it for like a suspicious amount of time of where maybe they were taking some promo shots or something. I don't know. I'm probably reading way too Hogan much wants it, a meme. But... He wants a meme. He learned what it was that morning. <laughs> make a meme out of me. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, I think that if they can make it happen, they, they might, just because it would be one of those twice-in-a-lifetime kind of moments. Has anyone done a meme Gene Okerlund yet? <laughs> Surely. There is a meme Gene dot I'm net sure there is. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. I, okay. see, I see it on uh, Rosafa sends a lot of memes, and yes. they have like a watermark on it. Okay, I have somewhere to check out after this podcast then. Because <laughs> <laughs> immediately I was just like, all right, I have to buy the URL. I have to do this. <laughs> all right, I'm glad that's work I don't have to do now. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know what? Let's, let's call Johnny real quick. He wants to talk about this pay-per-view real bad. Of course <laughs> On he his does. own podcast? On his own podcast, <laughs> if you can believe that. That's so. Weird. <laughs> so Hi, hey guys. hey johnny laquasso how you doing we're making a little phone call to get a couple of predictions maybe and i hear you have some kind of segment that you want to talk about yeah it's, it's going to be a segment that'll fall flat and never be used again but what the hell that's what podcasting is all about that's what i'm all about Dale. <laughs> that, that is true <laughs> how's, uh, how's, yeah, how's Vegas? Vegas, uh, Vegas is uh, got to be hot, right? Degrees Celsius. <laughs> Are you sure you're in Vegas and not Venus? That's 217 I, degrees. That's hot. Well, there's also no seasons in Venus, as we learned from uh, Stardust <laughs> That's a few weeks true. ago. <laughs> we learned so many things from him. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, how's the show going so far? Do you guys miss me or what? Eh, what? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got basically everyone that you love in one room, and uh, yep. we're having and a fun Scott time. Darber. Oh, oh. Yeah, I stand by my what? <laughs> this segment's going great so far, Johnny. Oh, uh, it's going really well. Anyways, I'm sure the show's packed. <laughs> I want to keep it quick. I'm going to introduce tonight Quasto's List O Fun. That is my favorite thing from this past week in wrestling. And uh, and here we go. Are you guys ready? Brace yourselves. Put your seatbelts on. Sounds fun. Ready. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm. I, I am amped, Johnny. Amped. The only guy that you dissed is into it. So <laughs> otherwise, great. I'm doing silent yes chants in my brain. All right. So. <laughs> here we go. Starting off, NXT TakeOver 2. Charlotte and Bailey telling an amazing story in the ring. A phenomenal match. And... Between Sin Cara, Kalisto, and all four guys in the Fatal 4-Way, the athleticism was frighteningly amazing. I mean, it was hard to even keep track of everything going on in those two matches. Agreed. I mean, we we, we talked about it and loved it, and uh, we didn't really talk about Charlotte too much, but, I mean, she could move up to the main roster any second. That's actually Sami Zayn and Charlotte, we should have said, because I feel like she is definitely ready for the next level i mean she's better than a lot of the the girls they have up there right now inside of the ring she knows you have to be on well, your shoulders to be pinned considering one of plus. the divas stares at herself in a mirror until after the bell rings i think it's a fair argument <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right moving on ec3 our favorite defeats rhino in a street fight while wearing pink pants oh my Come goodness on. E- EC3 is, is one of my favorite TNA guys, period, but to actually wrestle in pink pants, that takes uh, cojones. Real men wear pink. That's true. I looked it up. That's right. And on top of that, Jeff Hardy with a swanton bomb on top of a table, on top of one of the wolves to get the win. Uh, terrifying, but amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, that that whole uh, best of series is just a uh, dream boys fantasy. Um, but Nat was just telling me that, uh, was it Davy Richards? Yeah. Broke his leg. On not, that match? not in the match, but you know, those matches are like in the can for a minute, but he's already, he's broken his leg at some point since that match happened. Oh no. So I'm, I don't good. know. I don't know how, how deep they got into that, that best of series, but hopefully they, they got it all worked out before that happened. I mean, if there's anyone who could wrestle on that, it would be him. But, oh, man. Yikes. Well, moving on, let's uh, talk about something a little more fun than an injury. Uh, the great Kali actually speaking a few words of audible English on Raw. Uh, yeah. 
That was actually one of my favorite lines from Raw, the fact that <laughs> Cena was talking to him in Punjab, and then he was like, yeah, I got it. Don't worry, I'm going to get that soundbite for next week. So help me <laughs> oh, I bet. Next, The Miz and Damian Sandow laying in the same exact calendar pose outside the ring after losing on Raw. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, Nat beat you to the punch on that one, but that mm-hmm. I could watch. I could watch them do anything in sync. in sync. Specifically yeah. a calendar of them posing together in sync. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No disrespect to R. Ziggler, but yeah, they're better. Uh, yeah, well, all right. And finally, a prediction. Brock Lesnar will not only hit 16 German suplexes on John Cena and get the victory, but he will toss in a regular suplex just for a little bit of variety. Yeah. Well, I hope you're right, to be honest. I don't know about the, the regular suplex, but I hope you're right just for the sheer fact that I think it would be the worst booking in the world to have him lose to John Cena at this point. Absolutely agreed. And uh, one more thing I just want to say. Uh, this past weekend, uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, it was an amazing taping. We didn't have the biggest crowd in the world because Lucha Underground was also shooting the same day. But this crowd, you know, sometimes a bunch of people will band together and say, you know what, we may be small, but we're going to be amazing. That's what happened. Like, calling the matches was so fun. At one point, Ryan Taylor, our TV champion, comes out. The entire audience turns their back on him because they hated him that much. Like, he's that good of a heel right now. I don't know how they did it, but the entire audience turned their back. Like, no one told them to do it. They just did it. And it was, uh, it was a slow clap moment, that's for sure. That's awesome. I mean, I think that's the magic of indie sometimes. Sometimes you get a really good gem of a crowd, and sometimes it's, like, seven of you. They really were. Like, we, we actually sent, we all thanked them afterwards. They were, they were so awesome. And so go to HollywoodWrestling.com. The next, those episodes should be coming up in the next few weeks. And if you're in Vegas this week, um, I'm at the MGM Grand. So, I don't know, hit me up, uh, and, and we'll, I'm really lonely out here, guys. So uh, I hear you're very funny. Eh. I mean, it's just he a rumor. He writes his own jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm only funny when Kathy slaps me, and then I <laughs> Oh, yeah, your cheeks were missed this past Monday on After Buzz. I know. I'll be back. Well, guys, have a great rest of the show. I love you all, and, uh, and then let, let's, let's go give him hell. All right, thanks a lot, Johnny. Have fun out there melting away in Vegas. See you, guys. Johnny LaCosto, everybody. Good job. Good job. <laughs> love that segment. Can't wait to not do it again. <laughs> that was the meanest thing I've ever heard on NPR. <laughs> uh, Any hoozle. So, pay-per-view coming up. I think it looks like a strong card. I, I'm, I'm confused about the Reigns-Rollins yeah. situation, but regardless, what do you guys think uh, is going to happen this weekend? You know, everybody's so concerned about, oh, Cena might win. Uh, I think they're neglecting to think about the fact that Brock Lesnar's not a normal person that I don't think always gets the wrestling business. So them going like, yeah, you're going to lose the belt now, that he wouldn't throw a temper tantrum and just, like, argue and go out of his mind and that they can't speak to that guy rationally. So... To explain booking to him doesn't always work. Yeah. Remember, like, years ago, he didn't want to travel anymore, and he told everybody <laughs> to stay off the internet. Like, he was having these <laughs> huge tirades of stuff. Like, he's not normal. No. I don't remember that at all. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's partially why he left. Like, Was he, he telling, like, the other employees, or was he just telling, like, other the human beings? Oh, okay. Yeah, like, wrestlers. St- okay. stay off the internet. Like, it's it's bullshit. I think he was, telling, like, he was, like, talking to the fans. <laughs> Probably too. If if they got a word in with Brock Lesnar and he wasn't yelling at them uh, about something else, it's yeah, he's not a normal person. So I don't think logic always goes into these things. So you can't explain to him like, oh yeah, Cena's gonna beat you now. I just love that he's been showing more personality lately with yeah. Heyman. Like he's not just like Heyman's his mouthpiece, but it's also he'll have these smirks to what uh-huh. Heyman says, mm-hmm. and it just it. He looks scary even though he's laughing. Yeah. It's he's, great. He's really reveling in it, and I think that uh, this is the best we've ever seen him. I mean, mm-hmm. this is, what, 10, 12 years after his official debut? More, yeah. Something like that. Uh, 12 years, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's... I don't want his reign of terror to end. Me neither. Right That's now. the thing. Like, it, I, it would be... So, I mean, he beats The Undertaker's streak. Yeah. And then his next match is, you know, six no. months later, and he destroys Cena... Worse than we've seen in any like main event match, maybe ever. Yeah, maybe it's I been they, years. If... They researched it. It was something like uh, somebody with um, uh, San Martino. That yeah, happened like forty years ago. That there was the only other world title match that had gone down like that. Huh. Yeah, and it was probably San Martino, the babyface, just trouncing the heel. Mm-hmm. 
And just to have it all in with, again, Cena overcomes the odds. Even if Rollins cashes in and it does end with like that swerve, Lesnar is so much money. Every time he shows up, we're enthralled. We want to see where this goes. I, yeah. uh, I would have said a few months ago I wouldn't have been excited to see Lesnar, and it's really this past... Um, run at WWE that's changed my mind. Yeah, this yeah. program with Cena has been great for both of them. I mean, it, it, it's really made... To, to have Cena put anyone over, I mean, yes, of course, it's Brock, but in that fashion blows my mind and, and my respect doubles for him because he's willing to do something like that. And just from like a straight storytelling perspective, Brock Lesnar wins. He destroyed John Cena two times in a row. Who could possibly stop this guy now? Yeah. And he's just going to leave because there's nothing for me here. And meanwhile, you have, like, the entire roster. They're fighting out to see who's going to be the next in line of challenge. And then John Cena, he's the guy who's never failed. All of a sudden, he's failed. He has to confront himself with this. Maybe he should be a Heyman guy. Maybe he shouldn't. Maybe I should have listened to him. Nothing I did. There's so many different elements you can go with that as opposed to just, well, let's go the safe route. Because, I mean, that's what makes TV shows great. It's drama. It's not knowing where it goes. It's like throwing wrenches and everything. Breaking Bad was great because you think, oh, they finally got it all figured out. Nope, everything went wrong again. <laughs> it's not status quo is what makes things interesting. Yep. Yeah, they've done a great job since getting rid of two goofy-ass world championship titles within one company. Mm-hmm. That ever since <laughs> it became one title, um, from Orton to Brian to Cena... To Brock, they've treated it like it's establishing that next guy that much more each time, and mm-hmm. it means that much more. Yeah. So I think with Triple H, with Vince, like they're all in the same mindset right now that it goes from Brock to the next guy that they're going to make. Yeah. That it's not just going to go a month in back to Cena because, oh, that's what advertisers want. I think they have a game plan of something like that. They may not know who yet necessarily, yeah. but I think they're on that page of, nope. The one title has to mean a whole lot again, and for the next person. Uh, outside of that match, though, I kind of feel like a lot of the other titles are very easily going to change hands. I, I, I could see new tag team. I mean, Stardust and Goldust are on a roll like yeah. like never before. Uh, I mean, Cesaro, Cesaro could yeah. ha- very easily take mm-hmm. that title. Mm-hmm. I would love to see Miz and Ziggler just flip back and forth every I, single title. I feel defense. like Ziggler will keep it though. My only and thing... then I feel like Paige will keep it too. Yeah, if if Brie gets involved and knocks Nikki out, then I I think then that would be fine. But otherwise, I feel like I'd like to have Paige keep it. But I, I don't could think see they're going to them... give it to Nikki at all. If it if it does change, it'll be to AJ. Which one of the Bells was already Divas Champion? Was it Brie? Because remember there was that time where like they would do the Twin Magic, but only one of them was actually champ. Brie has had it before. I know that for a fact. Okay, because I couldn't remember. <laughs> Tyson Kidd. I know I'm Tyson that. Kidd. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> that was weird that he had fact, like on his crutch. <laughs> the next day, I was like, okay. Well, it ain't fiction. Hello. That's on the backside. <laughs> wow. What? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah. I, I mean, I think we could kind of debate the other ones, but I, I think that that's. Jericho Orton? Is there much interest in that? Ooh, I. I like it on on paper. I mean, I love both of them as performers. I it was cool years ago. I just it's it's <laughs> another sort of match where it's like, oh, so Orton beat him up because it's the season premiere of Raw. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought Wyatt was going to join that match. I mean, I, they don't do a lot of double triple threat matches mm-hmm. on a card, but I thought you know since it was one divas one one guys, that might be fine. But it does seem weird because Orton does need a win. I, I will say he's been on. Yeah. You know, putting people over, especially Reigns, wow, for yeah. a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, even in Evolution, I'm not sure Evolution, did they ever pick up a win against the Shield? No. I don't think they did. So it's been a long time of him really putting other guys over. So it would be nice if Jericho's like, well, I got to go, so you can have yeah. this one. I would think that it's they're just trying to use Jericho one last time before he goes and films this new Comedy Central show that he's doing. Yeah. Um, so they wanted to... you use him as much as possible and this was the only feasible you know semi storyline that they could put him in right now i'm a little concerned that this might be jericho's kind of like finale yeah. just because he's you know he's getting older he's doing a lot of other things that are other interests and he has that weird peep show moment they're doing as the pre-show that could be his like little light like- Subtle goodbye. Yeah, just like, I'm gone, but I'll be back, maybe. I don't know. I just get concerned. Why was it never mentioned, 
like Adam Rose and Chris Jericho used together. Like Fozzie dad uh, yeah. is like the mentor to Adam Rose and like I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was he was so quick on this particular run he's yeah. been in and out he really didn't have time to put anybody else over besides Wyatt I feel. wow yeah mm-hmm. good call it, it feels like he's been back for longer than he actually has been it doesn't feel like he ever leaves yeah <laughs> which is a good thing like you yeah. don't yeah you're not missing him he'll take hiatuses yeah and he comes back when he's needed him and RVD it, it does take a, away a little bit of the, the magic pop when they come but I mean it's like well you know you can't surprise people all the time you mm-hmm. know but uh, I hopefully I don't know I, I like it whenever Jericho comes back me too it's I mean good. he's just Great. I mean, he's, he was one of my favorites growing up, and I, I am always happy when he's in town. In town? And also, <laughs> that new jacket, you know, I like that he's always trying to tweak a little bit about what he's doing every single time. Yeah, I mean, he's one of those guys who can lose every single match, and people will still love him because he's just done so much in his career. He doesn't have to keep winning to be relevant. Same with RVD. That's what I've liked about his like last runs. Like, he comes in, he tries god bless him i mean like that style of his is hard to maintain well and he doesn't talk that too yeah it's like hard to really do anything different when you're not given a microphone Mm -hmm. but i mean like he never even when he was cutting promos he was never really saying much it was always just like (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) yeah (laughs) i mean i like rvd told me to say this right (laughs) now (laughs) dude I don't care, man. <laughs> Is the prompter oh. high? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think I think that's pretty good for the pay per view. I mean, there's there's multiple matches we could talk about, but we're running a little long. So unless y'all think something crazy is going to happen, mm. any any swerves you think they might pull out? Ambrose, I think, the, like we said, could be a, a surprise. But I I think they'd be smarter to save it for Raw. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're getting the you're watching the pay per view either which way at this point, especially yeah. now the way that pay per views work. I feel like you want that bigger bang for your Raw ratings. We talked about a double turn with Cesaro and Sheamus. Yes. They both need it. They both need something. Sheamus, since coming back, you know, he had a lot of that baby Cena kind of vibe going on, and the kids were loving him and wearing the little Sheamus things, you know, but ever since he came back, it doesn't seem like there is much into him. And I just really want to see the Cesaro swing again. Me too. Selfishly. He he teased it on Monday, and that's the first time we've even seen him tease it in a while, so. Mm -hmm. Is he even still the king of swing? Because ever since he got that name, I don't know if he's done the swing at all. Literally, yeah. He's not a Heyman guy or the king of swing, so everything post-mania. Winning that battle royal. Yep. And they used to have the C-section. That's no more. yeah. The glory days. Who was handing out those signs? Somebody was. They called it the C section. Yeah. Yeah, because they would all have little Cesaro C's. section. Oh. They had. But it, it sounds like a C section. Baby it. out. <laughs> <laughs> he has no hair like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> that what? would be such a great name for a finishing move. The C section. No. <laughs> Definitely not. CZW, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Is Bad News Barrett anywhere close to coming back? It's got oh, a while. Oh man! Didn't he? I really soon, miss soon. Hopefully, yeah. I miss Barrett. I do too. And that gimmick has he should, miles on it. He yeah. should be sky. They should be doing Skype interviews or something like that every so often. Like he should interrupt the show via social media in mm-hmm. some way. Like pop up on the Titantron and just give some bad news. Yeah. 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 When did he go down to injury? It was a pay per view where they uh, gave the. They did the title. Um, well, they had that. Oh, that like, one. Had, I, I was <laughs> trying to think. It was like two months ago or so. It was, it was a couple months ago. Slam. It's been like two and a half or three months because I remember he got injured and then they did the Battle, Battle Royal Ground? that Miz won. And then the next month, Ziggler won. And then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Battleground? Too long ago. Not yeah. long enough for him to be healed, though. No. Yeah. Mm. He's uh, broken. Poor dude. Poor, poor fella. All right, so that wraps our predictions. We're going to close out the show real strong, guys, with our Daniel Bryan interview. Uh, This is also from SummerSlam. Uh, He talks a little bit about his injury, a little bit about the Bellas. But uh, I had a great time talking to him as a second time here, but I love that guy. I hope he gets healed up real quick. We we still don't know any any time frame for him, right? There's not even a rumor. I think I heard that he won't need surgery on his elbow because he's starting to get feeling back in it, maybe, okay. or strength or whatever the issue is. Yeah, there was something. he. You'll hear it in the interview. Yeah. But um, hopefully before Royal Rumble. I could see it being great to have him come back because they always like that big pop, but that is forever away. <laughs> Lord. Anyways, here's our interview with Daniel Bryan. All right, guys, we're back with who we can call a friend of the show. 
It is his second appearance, which we never thought that would be humanly possible. But he's here. He's a former and future WWE World Heavyweight Champion, the orchestrator of the Yes Movement. But most importantly, he's just a good dude. He's Daniel Bryan. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm great. Dale's good. Dale's fiddling with the equipment here. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Technical work. Don't are you mind okay? Me. Yeah, I'm great. Welcome back. <laughs> oh, thank so you very much. Again. Thank you. You guys are like buddies now. It's the second oh, time yeah. in we three go weeks. We go way back to Comic Con. Right. Yeah, we're <laughs> way back. <laughs> <laughs> I told your story about uh, Show Enough, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> was yeah. amazing. Because Hulk actually says Show Enough in his interview. Oh, so did I he really? Story oh. yeah, so it's just like <laughs> and Booker so T's on the show every week. So you're like, Booker, uh, you know Show Enough. He's like, oh, Show Enough. Yeah. <laughs> just loved it. Yeah. It was great. And I think Nigel might be waiting in a bush for you outside. Oh, yeah. He's going to ambush you. We told you. Nigel, we offered him, like, do you want to come with us? Because that way there's no phones involved. Right, there's yeah, no yeah, yeah. Between. There's no technology involved yeah, other than this machine right here. But and I don't have to deal with it. I'm no. just I'm watching you fiddle with those things. And yeah. done. Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, obviously he says hello and uh, – and he's like, because he told us ahead of time, he's like, he's like, you know, he's, he's never been a phone guy. He's, you know, he told a story actually on our show about how the one time he said, I think he was on the road with, I forget who. And he said, you know, uh, Daniel will definitely answer if his dog tweet, uh, texted him. And so he sent you a text uh, saying, <laughs> hey, I'm starving. You didn't right. leave enough food for me. Please text me back. Love asparagus. Right. And he didn't. And he's like, and he didn't even text me back, man. <laughs> oh. But to your point, I said that was what he was saying. He yeah, doesn't yeah. text, dog yeah. or otherwise. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, a, not a big texting fan and not a big phone fan in general. And actually, like, so uh, uh, last night, Bree had said to me something to the effect of this. She said, I need your attention right now. And I said, you've had my attention all day, but your attention's been on your phone. <laughs> which is, which is like, but it's... Shot fired. <laughs> yeah, that, that did not win me any points. But it was like, uh, <laughs> but it's true because people are walking around just looking at their phone. It's, it's and like, alarming. This all, like, people feel like they have access to you 24 hours a day. And, and I don't want anybody to have access to me 24 no. hours a day, you know? Well, it's and so amazing like, how, and we're all similar in age, I think. It's, it's amazing how, it's hard for me to even remember the mid-90s when, when you left your house, if someone wanted to get a hold of you, too late. Yes. Yeah. 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 There might be a special code for your pager, but that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> pager. I was never. Cool, yeah. Man. I didn't even know anybody who had a pager. Like, you know, I had one for work. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I had a couple guys who thought they were cool, and they were like, "Hey, yo, page me." Uh, page oh, me. Man, <laughs> page and then what happened with pagers? Is that when they page you, did you have to go to like a, you to go to a, a payphone, payphone yeah. and then call somebody? Do you, know, do you know what I miss is remembering people's numbers. I used to yeah. remember everybody's numbers, Everyone's and now, number. now, like, I have a hard time remembering my wife's number and like it's like how is that possible don't get caught I, in an emergency yeah <laughs> right yeah like oh no if my cell phone goes down like how That's do i get it. a hold of her like, i have <laughs> friends that ha- haven't even remembered their own cell phone number right yeah because oh, yeah. they're so used to just like putting it in their own it's just you yeah, know like, can you google brie bella <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Google Brie Bella's phone number and like see what comes Hopefully up. Hopefully nothing yeah. comes up. I don't know. That's scary. And I miss the feeling, and this didn't happen often for me. I don't know about for you, Daniel, but I miss the feeling of, of when you get a girl's number, you have to write it down uh-huh. and then fold it in a piece of paper, and you go home feeling like the greatest guy alive because you got a girl's number. <laughs> do, you, do you know what that feels like? Success. Yeah. <laughs> more so, more so than like any like you know job promotion or anything uh-huh. like that you know like that is that like that is the definition of success yeah, especially if it's sloppily written on like a cocktail napkin yeah. or something weird like you know? don't like, smudge it <laughs> right, yeah. and then 10 minutes later you're doing that scene from swingers where favreau makes the nine voicemails and ruins everything ah uh-huh. <laughs> oh, that's the worst but yeah you're right we're in a world of technology that i i give you a lot of credit for living your life as technology free as possible because yeah. it does you well know, and it you know it's it's terrifying. Not that I have anything to hide from the government, but like all those NSA re- revelations, oh, you know, and like, okay, wait a second. They can, like, they can listen to our conversations with our phone being off it, when it's in off. the room. Yeah. And like, you have to take the battery out. You have out. to take the battery yeah. out. And like, I can't, I don't even know how to take the battery out of my iPhone. <laughs> nope. I don't right? know. Like, can you? Can you yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know if you can. And so, so I was reading, so I'm reading that new, uh, No Place to Hide by, um, the, uh, the guy who who broke all those stories, yeah, with, uh, right, right, uh, right. Yeah. with yeah, uh, no, yeah. not Snowden. Snowden gave him the papers and stuff. Oh. But anyways, he's he making money off Snowden. Yeah, he, it, 
it, what what Snowden had him do when they were talking because he couldn't take his battery out of his phone. I assume he had an iPhone. He had him put it in the in the refrigerator because the sound muffles oh. in the you know in the thing, and so it's like, wow, like. Refrigerator is also how Indiana Jones uh, didn't get killed from a nuclear bomb in that last movie. There, so yeah, good point. Refrigerators must be. Oh, oh wait, yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah, the Shia LaBeouf the, one. Yeah, that's the Shia LaBeouf one. That one. <laughs> that's the last I'll mention. And it, don't plus, worry. Daniel, you're getting to that level of fame now where you could be taken into a room and they can close the door like, Daniel, we're the Illuminati. Like, you don't want to get to that point. <laughs> okay, but it, okay, it depends. If they're like welcoming me into the Illuminati, it might not be such a bad thing. Like, I mean, it, I, I don't know if I good join. one K plan. There, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> but from now on, just do the Jay Z Rockefeller sign every time you go in the ring. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll know you're with us. Um, God, what, do we, what should we talk about? This is just fun. Well, just I have talking. A, I have a random question. Please go ahead. Not that this has been on any topic per se. Okay. Uh, I, I saw Stephanie last night. Okay. She showed me a shirt that they're making for her. Okay. That is basically your shirt. Right. That is ripped off, and it just says, Steph, Steph, Steph. Right, yeah. How do you feel about that? You know, it's interesting because, like, okay, I kind of I, I kind of popularized the yes chant. Yeah, right? kind of. Oh, yeah. yeah, and mm-hmm. so, um, but it, it makes me feel weird because it's like, so I kind of popularized it, but I got it from a UFC guy who got it from, I think, a, a speaker named Tony Robbins. Oh, Tony and Robbins. So it's, yeah. uh, so it's like, no, that so actually, I've, done, I've, I've gone to his events, and there is a lot of yesing. That's yeah, and, and so, and so uh, but I mean, the way I do it is a little bit different, but whatever. So it's been popularized and put on this shirt that says yes, and then other wrestlers besides me have done it to get crowd response, right. and then now... The bad guys are doing it to get a negative response, and it's it's just if you look at the psychology aspect of this, like uh, one of our our old um, one of our doctors that he had just recently uh, parted ways with WWE, but he had a psychologist friend who watched the WWE just since he started kind of being the doctor for it, right. and she was fascinated by what goes on, like yeah. because it was at the time when I was doing the no to try to get everybody else to <laughs> right. do the yes, so I was a bad guy doing no, so every. Everybody would yes, and now the bad guys are doing yes, so that so people cool. will boo them, <laughs> and it's like it's so it's so weird psychologically how yeah. this this group even crowd, ADR had like the C C C thing yeah going on wow. yeah oh my gosh and it yeah. also speaks to how simplicity really wins out yeah. it's one word and yeah. it just it's elicits fun. emotion yeah yeah well, and, and it's I think the key to the whole thing is that it's fun. Like, yeah. it's just fun. Like, God. when you see every, like, it doesn't even have to be in reference to me. You see it in, like, the basketball games yeah. and, like, you know, the soccer stuff and, like, all these guys doing doing this thing. And, and like, it's just fun. You see a whole crowd doing it. Like, yeah, it's, it's I want to do It's morning caffeine. You yes ten times. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a shot of espresso. Yeah, so, yeah, it's interesting. Now, uh, I have a personal question, I guess, kind of. You're from Washington, obviously. Uh, you didn't go to either school, but if you had to choose, Washington or Washington State? Okay, all of my friends, literally, all of my friends were all big UW fans the entire time we were growing up, mm-hmm. and then they all went to Washington State. <laughs> Why? Is, that, is that because it's easier to get into Washington State? I'm not sure. I don't. I don't okay. know. I, you know, I wasn't involved in that whole college application process. I don't know. I don't know why it could have been the programs that they specifically I think wanted. It worked out for you. Yeah, and uh, but but yeah, like all my friends seem to really enjoy Washington State University. I think the uh, the UW campus is beautiful. Yeah, and so I don't know. I. I don't really have a preference. I'd probably go to Evergreen College, which is a real hippie college in in, in Olympia. So, <laughs> solid. Yeah. How um, have you actually like how how difficult is the upkeep of? I can't grow anything, so I don't know. You what literally it's like. can't grow a beard. Oh, yeah, I'm not yeah. a man. It's okay. Um, <laughs> is it difficult to like just upkeep the beard at all? Like, okay, so it <laughs> is not because I don't do anything with it. Oh, like, okay. um, this is just. My natural state. So you're I lucky up, that it just grows perfectly. It, well, no. What happened is last week I went. I was able to go to my friend's wedding, and so uh, my wife had me go to her friend, who's like a really like one of those very stylish hair salon people who's like very good at cutting hair and like uh-huh. no, you know all that <laughs> kind of stuff. She said, "Well, you just trim up his beard because the side had started to like oh, it gets thick. Uh, yeah, it, well, it started to go out to the side a little bit. So she trimmed that up for my friend's wedding. So, but." Since then, I haven't done anything with it. So, like, what happens is every time I shampoo my hair, I also shampoo and condition my beard. And then when I get out of the shower, I comb it out. 
And that's the Jesus. only that's the only maintenance that I do. You're going through a whole bottle every time you're in the shower. Like, all right, we got here, we well, got the beard. Uh, the, the most frustrating thing is, so my wife does not like the shaved head and beard look. I, I like it because it's very low maintenance as uh-huh, far as having yep. a shaved head. But uh, now it takes me, one, it takes me forever to shower. Two, I go through copious <laughs> amounts of shampoo <laughs> and conditioner. And I was just like, this is just such a waste. I should just shave my head. And she's like, absolutely not. You know, now, a, do you, are you allowed to chew? Like, do they, does WWE say, like, no, we want this look or this look? I mean, you're pretty much carte blanche with that, right? Okay, y- yes, but so I did all of this on my own. I didn't ask anybody, like, hey, can I grow a beard or yeah. can I grow my hair out? I just, and people didn't even realize I was growing my hair out until, like, three months ago. And, like, they were just, they were just like, what? Wait a second! You grew your hair out. I was like, "Yeah, you were so distracted by the beard that you didn't realize I was growing my hair out." And so, like, but if I were to, if I were just to show up, you know, on Sunday and with a shaved head and shave my beard and be like, "Hey guys, what's going on?" Yeah. They'd be like, "No, you're oh, fired." Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I just really like, I want to ask you. So, um, I do commentary for uh, for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Okay, and you might remember four years ago. For our very first taping, you were actually on the roster, but I okay. think you just got signed. Like right before the first taping, but I remember uh, going to the website and I was like, "Oh, cool, he's going to be on the on the roster." And then then he got signed. I was like, "Oh, he's not going to be on the roster." <laughs> but um, but Claudio was there at the time, and uh, yeah. and obviously it's just uh, I know you have such a rich history of of all over the country, but especially in Southern California. Yeah, yeah, it, it it's really cool just because uh, like Pro Wrestling Gorilla was one of my favorite companies to wrestle for here, and like uh, when we we were doing an NWA. TV show here. That's what for, it was. Okay. NWA from yeah, Hollywood. That's the, and, uh, the show, yeah. yeah, and the, and that was fun. And the, yeah, like I lived down here for a while, off and on, from 2002 until 2005. And so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed living in this area. Absolutely. Um, I have a couple questions. Do you want? Go ahead. Uh, we got to wrap here in a second. Oh, we do. So two quick ones. Better Santa Claus, Tim Allen or Mick Foley? I would say Mick Foley, only because he might hear this. Yeah. <laughs> he was on our show this week. Right. <laughs> the good chance he is. All yeah. right, I'm going to give you two of the most common trees in the state of Washington. Okay. Western Hemlock and Douglas Fir. Okay. Which one is the thicker, stronger tree? Gosh, I don't know. I would have to say a Douglas Fir. The answer is I honestly don't know. I just figure I would ask you to see if maybe you did know. Right, yeah. <laughs> I just looked I, up trees. I was like, yeah, oh, I was gonna, I was going to I think of Douglas Fir, but I can't I can't be for sure on that. And what's one or two albums that you would take with you if you had to be on like an island for 3 years? Oh my gosh, that's impossible. Um, I thought so too, yeah, but Yeah, so Frank Turner, uh, Love and Ire and Song wow. is probably one. And then another one would be um, so Kimmy Dawson put out an album, and I don't remember with who or oh, with uh, Aesop Rock, the Uncluded. Yep. So it's it would not be that album, that but was the good. one, okay. yeah, it, it was that was a fun album. There's this awesome one about uh, donating, um, about being an organ don- donor. It, yeah, did you see the video? No, dude, it is so sad. It's it's claymation, and it's a bunch of insects doing organ transplants in each other, and like uh-huh. you show someone, pa- like the one bug passes away. Yeah, <laughs> literally, the video makes you cry your eyes out. Yeah, oh but man, that's the album. I've got to see the Uncluded it. Yeah, with Aesop yeah, Rock. Yeah, but the album before that that she did is probably one of my favorite albums of all time. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah, it's just very inspirational stuff and some very sad. I like that she sings sad songs, too. Like, she sings, like, inspirational songs and sad songs, and the lyrics are just so, like, you know, personal. intelligent and personal, and, like, you know, anybody can relate to them, and it's, I don't know. I hate modern pop music. I would have never guessed. Right. Yeah. We could wrap it up on that. We knew that would be an eclectic answer from a very eclectic man, Daniel Bryan, everybody. Thanks for having you back yeah, on the show. Thank and you guys. Can't wait to see you back in the ring. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that interview. Make sure to keep the iTunes reviews coming in. I want to be a shout out to Nerdist, our engineers, Katie Levine and Monica Shaw, the man behind the music, Jake Lloyd, and of course, my wonderful in studio guests. I couldn't have done it without you guys. It was very strange realizing that they were both going to be gone. You were a very good plan B. Plan A. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to tell yourself, Kathy. Put yourself over, Scott. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, follow me on Twitter at Curtain Jerks and listen to my comedy wrestling podcast, Curtain Jerks, available on iTunes and SoundCloud. And uh, to the end of the month, our podcast is giving away one free year of the WWE Network. So tweet Whoa. me at Curtain Jerks if you want to find out details or go to Facebook.com slash Curtain Jerks. How can we rig this so that I win? Uh, enter and just let me know that you entered. <laughs> <laughs> 
was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's pretty simple, guys. You can win me over with a quick bribe. <laughs> <laughs> Nat, what you got going on? You do find me on Twitter at Nat Bay Mill, and if you happen to be in Vero Beach, Florida, October 3rd and 4th, I will be at the River Center Theater performing at the Comedy Zone. Nice. Is that and 4th? Third and 4th. <laughs> third and fourth. Third and fourth. <laughs> It's actually the cross streets. Oh, okay. That's La Costa's new album name. <laughs> Heard for it. <laughs> Heard it sings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kathy, put yourself over after that. You can that. find me on Twitter at Katherine Kelly, and you can find me on Instagram at Kathy Kelly. <laughs> and watch those 316 shows she has on AfterBuzz TV. Do it. I am The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find me cooking up some dishes on YouTube.com slash Dishing On Movies. Johnny and... Chuck shall be back, I believe, next week. Uh, so we'll have the regular crew and some new exciting stuff for y'all. So thanks for listening. Buddy. Buddy. Your buddy. Hey, buddy. Buddy. You got me mad now. Now leaving Nerdist.com.